Today I am in Western Panama and I'm going to be looking for lizards. There are quite a few species here. Lizard diversity in Panama is pretty good. They represent quite a few families and quite a few species. So we'll see what we can find. I just saw a little lizard with a red tail go into this piece of bamboo. You see that? That's its tail. It's moving away. There he is. I'm going to see if I can catch it. So this little lizard right here is called Gymnothalmus speciosus. This is the golden spectacled tegu. And as the name of its genus suggests, uh, it does come from the family Gymnophthalmidae. And of course, if it's in that family, that means that it is not a skink. So you see it has those skink-like scales, has the same build, long tail, uh, little feet, and kind of a tapered head. That's just convergent evolution. They've evolved separately to fill more or less the same niche. But that being said, in this environment here, there is a species of skink that's running around. Maybe we'll be able to find it. Oh. Here we have a uh, night lizard from the genus Lepidophyma, and this one, if it stops moving, this one is the Costa Rican night lizard, Lepidophyma uh, reticulatum. And the reason it has that last name, reticulatum, is because it does have that reticulated pattern there of spots, and this one's about halfway grown. It's quite a, it's quite a sizable species in terms of night lizards. And this is one of two species of night lizards that can be found in uh, Panama. The other one is the yellow spotted night lizard. This is a giant green anole, and obviously this one is not very giant. It's just a juvenile, but they do get quite a large size. This is the largest anole species in my area, also known as the neotropical green anole. These guys can grow over 30 centimeters, I think even over 35 centimeters, um, including the tail. All right, sir. Back you go. Just found this Lepidoblepharis, a yellow spotted gecko, under this log here after uh, clear cutting of a ton of low brush. And these are really common around here. It's a species that lives in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and uh, Colombia. And it's a diurnal species that runs around looking for um, little insects to feed on. Um, and they're fully terrestrial. They don't really go up in uh, trees and whatnot. This little anole uh, crawled into my room while I was trying to sleep this morning. So, off you go. Oh, nice. We have now found an adult Costa Rican night lizard. And I didn't expect to see it under cover like this. Lepidophyma reticulatum likes to be in places that are a little more covered, like more shaded. But we are at the edge of a grove here, so it does sort of make some sense, I guess. Interesting thing about these lizards, of course, is the head scales, how they don't really match the rest of the body. But if you flip these guys over, you'll see you've got yet another uh, group of scales on the ventral side here that are nothing like the ones on the dorsal side. Very interesting group of lizards. These are Zentuzids, and the genus that this one's part of, Lepidophyma, is just the tropical night lizards found in Mexico and Central America. Putting this one back under its log. We've got a giant anole here, Anolis bipercatus, and this time it's actually an adult or near being an adult. But that being said, compared to all these other smaller anoles, there were some back here that I was going to compare to, but I don't see them anymore. Uh, this one's quite large. And this pattern that they have, the, the black patterning, they can actually drop that. Um, they can be completely green. It's kind of like a chameleon, but instead of with the color, it's more with a pattern. One of these Lepidoblepharis geckos. I don't know where it just went. Anyway, sharing its home with this possible Lassiodora species. Oh, there's a night lizard here. This one's about one third to halfway grown. And I'm not too bothered by that after seeing that large adult. I'm really not sure why the smaller ones are so much more common than the adults. Very strange phenomenon, though I've seen it in quite a few different animals. All right, off you go. Ooh, nice. This is a yellow-headed gecko, and it's one of the more common geckos that we have out here. But despite that, I've only seen this individual, and already we can see 
It's missing a few toes on that foot there, but still has its original tail, which is kind of interesting. And this is part of the um, tropical geckos family, Spherodactylidae. Lives throughout Central America and can even be found in the Caribbean. And actually used to live in Southern Florida until the 1990s when it was uh, wiped out. I'm not sure by what. I can only imagine it was by uh, urban expansion. You can go back under your log. This is a helmeted iguana, and it is raining. There's a lot of thunder, it's dark. So I think the lizard's trying to sleep. But anyway, this guy is sleeping on a brown vine currently. And usually they're on something like that. They're on, on vines, this is the perfect habitat for them. But sometimes you'll find them on leaves as well. And these guys have the ability to change colors a lot like chameleons do. And pretty quickly too, it only takes them a couple minutes uh, to become green or to become brown. And so if you take them off of a green leaf and you place them onto a brown vine, they'll transition colors and then vice versa. It's pretty cool. Well, a lot of those lizards that we saw were diurnal lizards, but I thought we'd come out at night as well to see if we can find any nocturnal ones or perhaps night flip a couple that are still uh, diurnal, but sleeping or see some sleeping on some branches. I don't know, uh, we'll see. This is without a doubt the largest gecko I've ever seen in my life. I'll take it down so you can see the size on this thing. Really cool. Here's our gecko. It really wants to bite me. It's making weird sounds too. And despite the few times I've been to the tropics uh, in the past, I haven't really seen any native geckos. Uh, just a lot of house geckos and stuff. So really quite a nice find. We've got a helmeted iguana sleeping on a branch at night, as they do. And I don't know if it's just going to dash off. I mean, it was sleeping, but its eye is definitely open right now. And it definitely sees me at this point. There he is, off the ground, as they always are when they're sleeping. Gotcha. These are also called the uh, elegant helmeted lizard or the helmeted basilisk. And the reason for that is because, as their genus suggests, they're from the family Corytophanidae. And that family has three genera, uh, one of which is helmeted iguanas, the other one is basilisks a lizard which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Those are the ones that um, run across water. And then the conehead lizards. And these are all found in the Americas. Why don't we leave you up here? I found this little lizard running around on the ground. You're not gonna see me catching these on video because they require a lot of attention to successfully capture. But anyway, this is a Northern root tegu. And ironically, its scientific name is Loxophilus southi. And it is related to that lizard that I showed you with the red tail. They're from the same family, just different genera. Uh, and this one is not an adult. It's about halfway grown. I wanted to show you this giant turnip tail or Northern turnip tail that I just pulled off of this wall here. And this one seems to be even larger than the last one actually. And a second ago, it wanted to bite me. There you go. And I wanted to say, ironically, this one with its regrown tail actually has uh, more of a turnip going on than the one that had the natural tail. This is Marasora unimarginata. This is the Central American Mabuya. Uh, and this is a species of skink that is both active during the day and the night, kind of equally. Didn't really bother catching one until much later on. Um, because they're a bit tough to catch and they do drop their tail, but I was successful in getting this one without damaging it in any way. And it's not an adult, it still has a little bit of growing to do, but they're not a very large species. I'm releasing it back in the rocks here where I found it. This is a morning gecko, and I want to say that this is a Lepidodactylus, the genus, I forget the species. And this is an invasive here, but they are quite common, which is unfortunate because they may have competition with smaller uh, northern turnip tail geckos, which are native here. Just caught another Loxophilus southi, the northern root tegu. And actually this one managed to escape before I started filming. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. I had to catch it twice as opposed to the last one we saw. This one is an adult but this one may actually be gravid. So perhaps there's gonna be some eggs in the leaf litter soon. I think these guys reproduce year round. Anyway, if this one is truly gravid, best to let it just get on its way and watch, it'll just disappear into the leaves. Oftentimes when they do that, you never see them again, unlike this one. I'm shining a light down at nothing right now 
And that's because I want to explain something before I shine my light at the actual animal. I had shown a Cordophanes cristatus before, a helmeted iguana, and I was saying that it can change color. It was brown or like dark green. And now I want to show you this one. It's um, quite different. Oh, I woke it up. Anyway, you can see that it's um, blue, a lighter green, has some spots. And this one has the ability to turn dark brown, dark green, like the one you saw. We have a giant gecko here. It's going down that crack. That's Thecodactylus repicata, or the northern turnip tail. And it has a malarial parasite that is found only in that species of gecko and nowhere else. Um, Panama and Venezuela. All right, we've got a third species of tegu. This is called Belair's bacchia, um, and the common name coincides with the scientific name. Uh, we call this bacchia blairi. It's one of two bacchia that is found in this area, the other one being politiceps, and they are found almost exclusively in this habitat that we have here. They, they don't like sun, they don't like fields. Um, they're kind of the opposite of speciosis. Uh, they really need to live in forests where it's damp and it's very shaded. So when we were looking at the Gymnothelma speciosus, I was talking about convergent evolution with uh, skinks because they evolved to look a lot like skinks and kind of take up the same niche. This one, I kind of see as being an amphisbianid or a worm lizard. It looks very, very similar. It's got an elongated tail that's not very thin. Um, most of its body is about the same width. Its eyes are extremely small and its head is tapered and it has very small feet and the scales look a lot like amphisbeanid scales. So I think it's more or less evolved to be a little amphisbeanid. Uh, and this is pretty much an adult. They don't get much larger than this, along with the other two tegu species we saw. It really doesn't get that large. All of the helmeted iguanas I've seen sleeping at night have just been sleeping normally with their feet on a branch. But this one is kind of sprawled out weirdly. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to zoom in. That guy right there. You see that? His arms are just sticking out. If that even is a helmet iguana, I doubt it's a basilisk. Let me try to approach. Yo, look at this guy. It is a helmet iguana. What is he doing? Oh, I woke him up. My bad. All right. See ya. Two Costa Rican night lizards under one log. This is the first time I've seen this, though it was bound to happen eventually, considering that they're pretty common under these logs. We've got a northern turnip tail gecko living in this tree complex here, and do not have a pleasant bite, considering that they are the largest gecko in Panama. And always pick up geckos by the body in a very calculated way, otherwise they will drop their tail. It's not something you want to have happen to them, because from what I understand, it only drops once, regrows once, and after that, there's not much they can do about it. So leave them that ability to defend themselves against an actual predator and not a human like yourself. These guys have a really large range. A lot of northern South America, uh, all the way up into southern Mexico. This is another Loxophilus southie. It's probably the last one I'm going to catch. And I think this one was actually actively hunting when I found it because it was stalking an insect. And little insects are what these guys eat. They have a pretty basic diet. It's just little bugs like a lot of lizards do. I managed to catch a second Marasaura unimarginata, the Central American Mabuya. Interesting thing about these is uh, like a lot of small lizards, this species is actually doing well um, in the Anthropocene. They tend to do much better in sort of like farmland than they do in pristine mountains. And they're much easier to see in people's uh, backyards than they are in just normal habitat. And this species just feeds on insects and other arthropods like a lot of lizards of this size do. I'm going to throw this one back in the palm here. This thing is really spiny. I've gotten a couple of spines in my foot already. It's not very pleasant. Well, that will be all for this video. I think we saw a fair number of lizards and species. So thank you for watching.